Thanks everyone for coming. I really, really appreciate it. Just like Danielle, it's awesome to have as many people out here when it's actually raining. But as you can see, this is multi-purpose. It provides shade, it provides shelter, and it creates solar energy. So it makes it really awesome. I just have a little story I wanted to tell in a sense to give you a little bit of a historical overview uh, of, uh, you could say, the human desire how to fly, the connective of population growth patterns, and the possibilities that we have really to fly even further up high in the sky in a different fashion bill. October 19, 1783 was the date when the first hot air balloon went up with three people on board. It was in Paris. France, not Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the time when we're getting close to the first billion of people on the planet. Now, I'll move, I'll move forward a little bit on to December 17, 1903. That's when the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, inventors and aviation pioneers, made their first flight. At that time, we have close to two billion people on the planet. Again, another step forward. Go to July 20, 1969. That's when Apollo 11 lands on the moon. You see a man stepping down the ladder and uttering the words, that's one step, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I remember that really well because I was eight years old and was in the kitchen slash living room of my aunt, who was the only person in the family who had a TV. The TV was about this size and black and white. And we were literally pressing our noses on that TV screen to see this incredible miracle happen, a lunar landing. Nobody ever imagined that, just like nobody ever imagined flying with an airplane or even with a hot air balloon until it happened. Now, October 1973 is when we have the oil crisis hit. And we're realizing our dependence on fossil fuels. A few years later, we'll have a president in the White House, Jimmy Carter, in 1977, who installs the first solar panels on the roof of the White House. Unfortunately, the next president who comes in takes them down, Ronald Reagan, 1981. Just imagine, what if we would have been embracing the idea of renewable energies as a solar already in 1981? Where could we be today? much further than we are today, perhaps, but we are making great strides. By the way, I should mention, during the time of Jimmy Carter's administration, we had four billion people on the planet, so you don't miss that link here. Now, today, of course, we have more than seven billion people on the planet. We have enormous pressures in terms of natural resources. We're burning fossil fuels at ever-increasing rates, it seems, and we're clearly, as 97% of all scientists agree, responsible for the current global climate change. Despite all that, despite what seems to be negative news that I just shared with you, it is important to realize, really, and this is something I truly believe, and I do think that we're at the beginning of a second solar age. Why do I say second solar age? Because the first solar age, really, in a sense, was using these ancient pockets of sunlight, these fossil fuels, oil, natural gas, and coal trapped in the ground for 200, 300 million years until we discovered them used them for the Industrial Revolution has brought us where we are today with the good and the bad and the ugly. But now we're at the point where just this last May, another one of these incredible moments, the first solar-powered plane flew across the United States with a Swiss pilot on board. The name of the plane was Solar Impulse. This wasn't the first flight. They had already done this in Europe going across Europe with a solar-powered airplane. I have to stress this. And they are planning on doing basically a circumnavigation of the globe in 2015. So if you bear with me, from the first hot air balloon in the late 18th century to the first motorized flight very early in the 20th century to the lunar landing in 1969 when I was eight years old. Yes, I'm an old fart to now that first solar flight just a few months ago, then you know what we are capable of, what we can do. And in the context of the campaign that SAVE is really pushing, the divestment campaign, a campaign that we wholeheartedly endorse, we, all of us, I think, when you reflect on this, we're looking forward to working with Dr. McKinney on making this a green campus, making this a sustainable campus, working on energy efficiency, energy conservation, and most importantly, working as a team. That's the only way it ever can get done. So thanks for coming.